Hello and welcome back to another episode of 10 Minute Tech. My name is Will Hammond and today we're going to take a look at a retouching technique that gives you a much more natural approach to traditional retouching. I'm sure you've seen images that had been so heavily retouched in Photoshop that they look like plastic surgery gone horribly wrong. Well the technique we're going to look at today gives you a much more subtle effect. And you know one of the problems we're running into is digital cameras have got so good that they show every single flaw. This image was taken by my friend Al Pitzner, brilliant photographer, lives in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, a number of years ago. And it was the first time I ever really noticed how good digital had become. Uh, I was a film shooter for years, and I've got news for you. Digital far exceeds the capability of film. This is only a 1.7 megapixel capture. And if I zoom in on this woman's eye, can you see her contact lens right there? That's how good digital has become. Well, if I didn't know that this was somebody's face, I might mistake these enlarged pores as dust specks. And if I didn't know that this was someone's face, I might mistake this line under her eye as a scratch in a photograph. Which got me to thinking, what if we tried the dust and scratches filter on this image? Now I know what you're thinking. The dust and scratches filter is probably the worst filter ever put in Photoshop. Well, I got news for you. We're going to show you how to take that awful filter, use it the wrong way, and give you the most killer retouching technique you've ever seen. Now, first thing we have to do is prepare our image so that we don't damage the original. You'll notice that in my layers panel, I have just one layer, a background layer. And the significance of a background layer is that that layer is locked. It can't be renamed, it can't be moved, and you can't erase through it. If you double click on it, you can make it a standard layer. As a matter of fact, you could do that by simply dragging this lock to the trash. However, we want to make it a smart object layer. And under the filter menu, you'll see a function that says convert for smart filters. Now smart object layers have come along uh, many, many years ago back in Photoshop CS2, but you couldn't apply filters to them. Well, starting in CS3, CS4, and later, you can now apply filters to smart object layers. The beauty of a smart object layer is no matter what you do to it, you can't accidentally save over the original. If I were to apply any effects, any editing to this layer, at any time I can simply double click on the smart object layer and it will take me back to the unaltered original. That means that if I do something today, I can undo it months from now. There's no risk of damaging the original. Well, let's zoom in on this woman's face again. There we go. And I want you to notice I have my smart object layer. I went up to filter, convert for smart filters. Now we're going to use noise, dust and scratches. Dust and scratches is a selective blurring filter. And I want you to think of it as a way of applying a filter much more selectively than if you use something completely random like Gaussian blur. I'm going to watch the line under this woman's eye. And I'm going to raise the radius up just enough to get rid of the line. Now you'll notice this obliterates my entire image. This is nothing more than Gaussian blur. Well, in Dust and Scratches, we have another feature called Threshold. And I want you to think of Threshold as a way of targeting where this filter is going to apply. We have in our histogram, right up here, 256 steps of light and dark. All images have 256 steps of light and dark. With exception of bitmap mode. Now, that being said, threshold set to zero means that as we look at every pixel in this image, there has to be a difference of greater than zero levels of difference in the light and dark values. Otherwise, the filter will not apply. So at zero, everything is fair game. If I start raising threshold, I'm essentially telling Photoshop, leave those pixels that are similar, the undust-like pixels, leave those alone, and only blur those that are different by more than whatever we've set in threshold. So if I start raising threshold up, you'll notice that some of the original skin texture starts to come back. 
the higher I raise this, the more of the original detail comes back. I'm going to raise this up only to the point where we start seeing some of the texture of the skin start to reappear. If I go any further than that, I'm just creating more work for myself. Now at a level of about 14 on this image, the line under her eye looks much better, but overall the image looks worse. Well, that's not a problem. If I click OK, I now have a layer of a filter. You'll notice that if I double click on this new layer called Dust and Scratches, I can bring back up the original settings, which I'm going to leave as they are. I also have this double triangle right here, which allows me to edit the blending modes for that layer. And for those of you who haven't looked at blending modes before, that's simply how one layer interacts with a layer underneath. We also have this white box right here, which is a layer mask. And a layer mask is simply a channel that hides part of a layer. If the layer mask is white, that means reveal the layer. So we're revealing the blurry dust and scratch layer. If I grab my paintbrush and I paint with black paint, I'm essentially telling Photoshop, hide that part of the layer. So now I've created a layer that is very selective. If I hold down Alt or Option, I can click on the mask and actually see that I've told Photoshop where this is black, conceal the blurry layer. Where it's white, reveal the blurry layer. That's Alt or Option click. Now realistically, there's a lot more of this layer that I don't want to see than I do want to see. So let's go up here and undo our brush stroke. What if we made the layer mask black? Image, Adjustment, Invert means make negative. Now we've made our layer mask black. We're concealing the blurriness. If we grab our paintbrush with white paint, we can selectively apply our filter. With white paint, I'm just going to paint here, here. We'll just go in and any place we want to conceal that detail, we simply paint over. We'll go over here, kind of clean up the bridge of her nose a little bit. That looks good. Get rid of that little blemish. Go into the eye here. Go to the eyebrow. We could even smooth her lips out a little bit. Get rid of the smile line. Clean up her chin a little. Give her a little trim. Clear up the little makeup smudge. Don't you wish you could do that to yourself? I do that every day before I leave the house. Let's take a look at before and after. Here's before. Here's after. Before. After. Photoshop. Botox. Let's call this Photox. If I zoom out all the way and I hold down my Alter Option key, there's where we did our retouching. Let's zoom in just a little bit, give you a before and after. Here's before, here's after. What I like about this technique is that it's subtle enough that it doesn't look like you applied too much plastic surgery. That's it for today. Subscribe to us. We'll give you more techniques. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.